In the echoing silence of the Vatican necropolis, beneath the grandeur of St. Peter's Basilica, lies a tomb. It whispers a name, etched in stone, echoing through the centuries. Linus. Who was this Linus, whose final resting place lies so close to the heart of the Catholic Church? Linus, the second bishop of Rome, the successor to St. Peter himself. His story is not one of epic battles, but of quiet faith and steadfast leadership, a time when the fledgling Christian community, reeling from the loss of its founding apostles, looked for guidance. And so we delve into the mists of time, seeking to unravel the untold story of Pope St. Linus, a man who walked in the footsteps of giants and left his own indelible mark on the history of the Church. The early followers of Jesus, a ragtag group of fishermen, tax collectors, and ordinary people, found themselves thrust into a hostile world. Persecution was rampant, and martyrdom was a very real threat. Yet their faith burned brightly, fueled by the belief in something greater. It was in this crucible of adversity that the early church was forged. At the heart of this nascent faith was Rome, the beating heart of the Roman Empire. Peter and Paul, towering figures of early Christianity, preached the gospel here. They recognized the need for leadership, for shepherds to guide the flock. Linus, a man of deep faith, was chosen to follow in their footsteps. He was entrusted with the responsibility of leading the church in Rome, a city steeped in pagan tradition. Little is known for certain about his life. The historical record is fragmented, but from these fragments, we can piece together a portrait of a man who remained steadfast in his faith. The years following the deaths of Peter and Paul were a time of great uncertainty. Persecution continued, and the faithful faced constant threats. Yet, amidst this turmoil, Linus provided stability and leadership. Linus, a name whispered in the catacombs, etched in the annals of the early church. He was chosen to follow in the footsteps of St. Peter, to assume the mantle of leadership. Imagine the weight of that legacy, guiding a fledgling faith still grappling with the loss of its founding pillars. Yet, Linus, a man of humble origins, accepted this sacred charge. The early church was a scattered flock bound together by a shared faith. In the wake of Peter's martyrdom, the Roman church was still finding its footing. Linus, as the second bishop of Rome, inherited a profound responsibility to nurture this burgeoning faith. The exact nature of Linus's episcopacy remains shrouded in time. What we know comes from fragmented accounts, whispers of his deeds passed down through generations. Yet those whispers paint a picture of a man deeply committed to his calling. His was a time for quiet leadership, for strengthening the bonds of faith within the Christian community. Linus's story is a testament to the power of continuity, the importance of passing the torch of faith. He stands as a bridge between the age of the apostles and the burgeoning church of the second century. His papacy, though brief, played a crucial role in solidifying the foundations of the church in Rome. Our understanding of Linus's life relies on piecing together fragments of information. One such clue comes from the second epistle to Timothy, attributed to the Apostle Paul. In this letter, Paul, imprisoned in Rome, sends greetings to several individuals, including a certain Linus. The passage reads, Eubulus greets you, as do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers. This brief mention takes on significance when we consider the possibility that this Linus is the second bishop of Rome. While the biblical text offers no further details, the fact that he is mentioned suggests he was an active member of the Roman Christian community. This connection to Paul adds another layer of intrigue to Linus's story. Did Linus perhaps sit at Paul's feet, absorbing his teachings? The possibility offers a glimpse into the formative influences that may have shaped Linus's leadership. While we cannot say for certain, the connection adds a sense of immediacy to his story. The title Pope, with its connotations of power and authority, sits uneasily when applied to figures like Linus. The early church was a far cry from the hierarchical institution it would become. The concept of a singular leader, a successor to Peter with universal jurisdiction, was still evolving. Yet even in those early days, the Bishop of Rome held a unique position of importance. Rome, the heart of the Roman Empire, exerted a gravitational pull on the early church. The Bishop of Rome naturally assumed a prominent role, a first among equals. Linus, as the second to hold this office, inherited a legacy and a responsibility that extended far beyond Rome. 
Imagine the challenges he faced, navigating Roman politics, providing spiritual guidance, and contending with persecution. The early church was a crucible, its leaders forged in adversity. Linus played a crucial role in ensuring the survival and growth of the faith. His papacy serves as a reminder of the humble beginnings of the papacy. It was about shepherding a flock, preserving the teachings of Jesus Christ, and ensuring the continuity of faith. Linus's impact on Christian history is undeniable. The life of Pope St. Linus is shrouded in a veil of time illuminated by ancient texts. To reconstruct his story we turn to the writings of those who came after him like Irenaeus, Jerome, and Eusebius. These early church fathers pieced together oral traditions, fragments of letters, and scattered documents. Their works often read like mosaics, hinting at a grander picture but never quite revealing the full image. The challenge lies in separating fact from legend, the historical Linus from the Linus of pious embellishment. By carefully examining the sources, we can begin to discern the outlines of Linus's life and legacy. Consider the writings of Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon, who provides one of the earliest accounts of Linus's episcopacy. Irenaeus, in his work against heresies, penned a list of the bishops of Rome, tracing the lineage of succession back to the apostles. In this list, Linus appears as the second name, immediately following Peter. The blessed apostles, writes Irenaeus, having founded and built up the church, committed into the hands of Linus the office of the episcopate. Irenaeus's testimony carries significant weight. A student of Polycarp who had been a disciple of the Apostle John, Irenaeus represented a direct link to the apostolic age. His affirmation of Linus as the second bishop of Rome provided a powerful endorsement of Linus's legitimacy. Irenaeus describes how Linus received the episcopate from Peter and Paul, further cementing Linus's connection to the foundations of the church in Rome. This act of transmission held profound symbolic significance for early Christians. However, Irenaeus provides no specific dates for Linus's episcopate, leaving the exact time frame open to debate. This lack of chronological precision is a recurring theme in early church history. Despite these uncertainties, Irenaeus's account provides a crucial foundation for our understanding of Linus's place in the early church. His list of bishops helped to solidify the idea of a continuous line of succession from Peter to the present day. This concept would have profound implications for the development of papal authority. While Irenaeus's testimony provides a crucial anchor point, the exact chronology of Linus's episcopate remains debated. Eusebius of Caesarea places Linus's episcopate between 68 and 80 AD, aligning his reign with the reigns of Nero and Vespasian. This time frame would place Linus at the helm of the Roman church during intense persecution, particularly under Nero. Jerome offers a slightly different time frame, suggesting Linus served as bishop from 67 to 79 AD. These discrepancies highlight the challenges of reconstructing a precise chronology. The sources we rely on are often separated from the events they describe by centuries. Adding to the puzzle is the Liber Pontificalis, a collection of papal biographies compiled in the 6th century. This work, while containing valuable information, is known for its blend of historical fact and legendary embellishment. The Liber Pontificalis places Linus's episcopate significantly earlier, from 56 to 67 AD, these conflicting dates serve as a reminder of the complexities inherent in studying early church history. The lack of definitive answers adds to the intrigue surrounding this early period of Christian history. We are left to navigate a landscape of shifting sands, piecing together the story of Linus from the whispers of the past. As we delve deeper into the life of Pope St. Linus, we encounter a curious claim, a decree attributed to him that has sparked debate among scholars. This decree, recorded in the Liber Pontificalis, asserts that Linus mandated women to cover their heads while in church. The Liber Pontificalis, as we've noted, is a source to be approached with caution. While containing valuable historical information, it is also prone to embellishment. Critics of the decree's authenticity point to its similarity to a passage in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. In this letter, Paul addresses a controversy regarding head coverings for women. The similarity between Paul's words and the decree attributed to Linus has led some scholars to conclude that the latter is a later interpolation. 
the Liber Pontificalis becomes a product of its time, reflecting the growing emphasis on papal authority. This decree, whether authentic or not, highlights the complexities of early church history. It serves as a reminder of the challenges in separating historical fact from pious invention. The story of Linus, like many early church figures, is a blend of history and legend. The story of Linus's head-covering decree offers a fascinating window into early church tradition. Whether or not Linus issued it, the attribution highlights the importance of papal pronouncements. It underscores the early church's effort to ground practices in apostolic authority. Attributing the decree to Linus connects the practice to the heart of the church. The successors of Peter were seen as guardians of true doctrine and practice. The head covering debate underscores the complexities of interpreting scripture. Paul's words in Corinthians became a touchstone for later generations. The story of Linus's decree reminds us that tradition is a dynamic process, a tapestry woven from scripture, historical circumstance, and evolving interpretations. Another intriguing aspect of Linus's story concerns the manner of his death. The Liber Pontificalis claims Linus died a martyr, silenced for his faith. Most historians, however, find little evidence to support this claim. After Nero, persecution of Christians lessened, making martyrdom less likely. Irenaeus, a reliable source, does not mention Linus's martyrdom. This suggests Linus may have died a natural death peacefully. Regardless, Linus's legacy as the second bishop of Rome remains secure. Centuries have passed since Linus, the second shepherd of the Roman church, walked the earth, yet his presence is still felt. Deep beneath St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican necropolis lies a tomb discovered in 1615 by Torrigio, bearing the inscription Linves. The location lent credence to the claim, known to be the burial ground of early Christians, including St. Peter. The inscription seemed to confirm that Linus found his final repose amidst the faithful departed. The discovery fueled renewed interest in Linus's life and papacy. The incomplete inscription cast doubt over the tomb's connection to Pope Linus. Could these letters represent another name entirely? Perhaps Aquilinus or Anulinus? Despite the uncertainty, its discovery in the Vatican necropolis is a reminder of the enduring past. The ground beneath St. Peter's Basilica is a testament to early Christians' faith and perseverance. Linus's legacy extends beyond a physical burial place. His name represents a crucial link in the chain of papal succession. Linus's story reminds us that grand institutions often have humble beginnings. His legacy etched in stone is a testament to faith, leadership, and the early church. The life of Pope St. Linus, like the catacombs that once sheltered the early Christians, is a place of shadows and whispers. Fragments of history intertwine with legend. We may never know the full extent of his deeds. Yet his story holds a profound power, a testament to the enduring legacy of faith in the face of adversity. Imagine Linus, a man thrust into leadership during persecution. He inherited a mantle heavy with responsibility. Yet he persevered, a shepherd guiding his flock. Amidst turmoil, Lennis provided a beacon of hope. His story reminds us that leadership is about quiet acts of courage. Linus, the second bishop of the Roman Church, understood this truth. His legacy, though shrouded in mystery, continues to inspire generations. In the grand tapestry of church history, Linus's papacy may seem like a small and faded thread. His reign was brief, his story often overshadowed by the more dramatic lives of his successors. Yet to dismiss Linus as a mere footnote would be to miss the profound significance of his life and legacy. Linus stands as a symbol of continuity, a vital link in the chain of apostolic succession. He represents the enduring power of faith to transcend time and circumstance. His story reminds us that the search for truth is an ongoing journey. It encourages us to delve into history with reverence and a critical eye. The pursuit of historical accuracy is a testament to human curiosity and our desire to connect with the past. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it even a little bit, how about hitting that like and subscribe button? And as always, thanks for watching.